Welcome to Smart Conserva. You know, I would consider myself to be a creative person. And it's like I'm always trying to find ways to save money in my pocket in every aspect of life. I see conservation as a method. So much so that when my floor tiles decided that they don't want to remain on paved floor anymore, I had to find a solution. <laughs> you know, I can laugh now, but when it happened, I was distressed. I heard numerous reasons why tile would leave, but that was never where my interests were. I wanted to just find a solution instead of dwelling on the problem. My first solution was to retile the area, and that I did, only to have it lift up again years after. Being a thinker, I did my research and came up with the idea of applying epoxy to the concrete layer, which was beneath that tile. But being in this country, I don't know where I would begin to get the material, much less the professionals to do such a task. I researched properly and decided, yes, this epoxy thing was my solution. So, now the decision involved two things. One, do it myself or hire someone to do it. Or two, even getting the materials. I was more aggressive in getting the materials than ever. And one day while visiting my favorite paint shop, the conversation came up. And I learned that they had materials that I needed. In fact, it was just being introduced in Jamaica. So now, I don't have an issue in getting materials. So where is the decision now? The decision is, who will do this thing? You know, I've done epoxy work before for myself and other members of my family. But it's in the area of the countertop for the kitchen. I would consider myself to be an expert in that area, that epoxy countertop, as that was easy. If you see my countertop, you could not tell it's concrete. So I'm not afraid of epoxy, as I have done things with it that you would never imagine. Well, there is a solution. Do it myself. And that's what I did. I took vacation from work just to get the job done. I had four weeks to complete three bedrooms and the living room. So let's do this thing. All right, so based on projection, I anticipated that it would take two weeks to complete the entire area. Once I got the help from my husband, all we had to do, all he had to do was follow my instructions. <laughs> you hear that? follow my instructions. I bought all tools I needed online. I got a sander with a variety of sanding disc, spike shoes for the epoxy floor coating installation. In Jamaica, I bought some things as well. I bought a curved floor squeegee that I only use once. I end up getting a loaner squeegee to use to complete the project. I also bought a small roller with three covers, six two inch paint brushes, six one inch paint brushes. For the paint brushes, I bought the cheapest one as I was using these and I would just discard them after usage. We had more work to do as the lifted and broken tiles had to be removed from all rooms and that we did. We tackled two rooms at a time. Unfortunately, we had that plan. I will tell you later how that plan two areas at a time helped. So after lifting the tile, we had to remove all materials that was affixed to the concrete, such as the dried tin set and the remnants of broken tile. After removing the entire area was sanded, with a number 80 grid sandpaper. All that work took approximately two days. I collected materials from the paint shop and it included etching solutions, 
do a plate to 35 protective and marine coating this is both epoxy and hardener and it's the color white clear protect self-leveling epoxy and it's a two-part hardener i collected also metallic pigment which is a jasper color industrial white which is a colorant and industrial brown which is also a colorant the color i wanted was beige with streaks for metallic brown so in order to get this beige, you have to use white and a tip of brown. The walls of the room were taped off and plastic placed on the walls so that any spill would not affect the painted walls. Seeing that I only had myself and one more person, videoing the actual work done was impossible as we were really interested in completion rather than videoing the steps. And think of it too. If it did spoil Mona, show you. <laughs> so now the rooms were sanded and it was now time to etch the floors. Based on the bottle with the etching solution, the solution can be mixed with water. However, if it is a steel floated concrete, then the solution can only be used undiluted. As my floor was steel coated and very smooth, I decided to use the solution undiluted. <clears throat> the rooms were sprinkled with water and the undiluted etching solution sprinkled. You know, the etching solution was working as the areas it touched started to foam. Using a push room, the solution was rubbed over the entire floor. You know it's working as the area started feeling rough. According to the instruction, when completed, the area should feel like 120 grade sandpaper. Well, the 120 grade sandpaper um, fe feeling was achieved. The area was then mopped multiple times with only water. I guess it's to stop the etching solution from working and to rid the area of this acid-like solution. The area was mopped, but not before the coarseness damaged the mop. The area shredded up the mop at times, leaving residue of the mop on the floor. Then we waited 24 hours for the area to dry. It dried white looking, chalky white. I had to sweep the area multiple times each time to remove the debris left from the shredded mop. After getting the area fully cleaned, we waited to apply the Dura Plate 235 Protected Marine and a protective and marine coating both epoxy and color hardener it was remember it was a color white we applied it then waited again another 24 hours to dry remember i told you the decision was made to tackle two rooms at a time well when we completed applying the protective and marine coating in one room we realized we had a lot left so we had to apply it to another room to prevent it from being wasted after applying it to the other room we still had some left but not a lot so we applied it to the metal clothesline we have and on the windowsill as it would make it easy to wipe off that concrete area we were saved from wasting our money for the final stage we mix the epoxy and add colorant until the desired color was achieved. Applying this epoxy was more time based than anything you had to apply and you had to move quickly or if and when this thing start heating up it means the solution you mix is drying to a hard form. The final stage was dry within 24 hours and I must tell you it shined like a looking glass and smooth too looking at it you would wonder if you would slide easily but no it won't slide it, it won't do that it makes the flooring look classy and elegant this diy project was one i was especially proud of to this day it makes me smile to achieve such a task I've been asked if I would do it as a business and my answer will be no. I would however help my family and friends to do it 
once the task is being done by them i'm not showing any workman how to do it you know that no one can pay me enough money for me to do this task at their home by myself or with a team i take on this task sometimes as a channel challenge and while it exceeds my expectation it has my personal touch i don't intend to add this personal touch to any paid client's property if i was to rate the level of difficulty for this project it would be a 10 out of 10. <laughs> this project was tiring i would suggest if you're up to the challenge if you're not up to the challenge don't try it there are many more projects that I've done, so join me next time where I will take you through another project that I've done. I will share it with you. Some of them quite easy. You have come to the end of another series. Join us next time for more ways to conserve.